I am honoured to be here and privileged to be here. Thank you, Pastor Mike Yo and the rest of the leadership of this church. I saw some of you, you came from yesteryears. <laughs> you sound like ancient. I met some of you, you came from the pioneering days. And you move on with the new leaders. It's almost like Moses passed it on to Joshua. And you're into the promised land. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Amen. You're into the promised land. The promised land never came without battles. I'm thankful God said I will do the fighting for you. And this morning in my devotion, I was already having the thought to pray for Pastor Mike's brother. And I'm so thankful, Si Yang. That's why I went very quickly to the back to hold hands with the husband and the wife, agreeing together that God will give them the breakthrough. Amen. How many of you are in agreement? Say amen. amen. Come on, give Jesus all the glory. Amen. You know, there's one thing about Christians, we've got to be more proactive than this, man. We cannot let the devil have an upper hand. You have the upper hand. And so the song says, I am blessed. I'm a favorite. Wow, I was like, what a declaration. So I said, take it on, take it on, take it on. I receive it, come on. You are highly favored, everyone. You are anointed, come on. Hallelujah. God is with us. And so we're going to take it on. Since the day I was saved to now, I remain the same. Never look older. I've been in ministry for 30 over years, but you know what? I, I just keep getting younger because the Bible says, though outwardly we waste away, but inwardly, you know, you've got to go for that legacy thing with your IC to show that, to prove that you're 50 years old. <laughs> Isn't that cool? All those 50 and above say, uh huh. <laughs> if I sing some old songs you can identify, then I know you're in that age group. <laughs> but I'm not going to do it this way. Amen. Crossing over your threshold. What is the threshold? Of, you know, I wanted to preach another message, but I just felt the Lord because this church is going through a threshold. And the leadership of this church, I don't know anything about your church, by the way. I just felt that the leadership and the whole church is going through a threshold. That's why many of you are going through battles. Say, praise the Lord. You're on the right track. When you are going through a threshold in the whole church, you must understand when God does the work in His church, it happens to all the members in the church. Praise God. Say, praise God. While we are part of the battle, amen. amen. Come on, tell your neighbor, it's a privilege and an honor to be part of the battle. Look at the times of Moses and Joshua. Come on, when they, it's not just Joshua going to battle. It's not just Moses going to battle. It's the whole Israel. It's the whole nation. And so it's your whole church. Church of praise, Jehovah, hallelujah. Amen. Wow. When you're in battle, you're on the right track. Come on. You know, the devil won't bother you if you're on the wrong track. The devil said, you're on my, on my track, on the same track. Why I bother you? But when you're on the different track, aha, uh -huh, that's where he's upset. So we got to cross over our threshold. What is the threshold of your life? And, oh, I'm supposed to be the one clicking. I forgot. I want to say click, 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 you know. <laughs> no, click which side now? I forgot. Which side am I supposed to click? Okay. Threshold is the doorway to the room. You know, I, I, you know, that's what basically the threshold literally means that doorway there. That's a threshold. Like you stop at the threshold of the room. And so, you know, Psalm is, says 80, 84, 10, for the day in your course is better than a thousand outside. Some of them put, I would rather be a doorkeeper or a gatekeeper. He says, I would rather stand at the threshold of the house of God, my God, and dwell in the tents of wicked. You know, this Psalm is what we say, I would rather stand at the doorway and be a doorkeeper and a gatekeeper. I thank God for all your ashes, all your doorkeeper right from the out, out, outside there to now. Come and let's thank God for all their ministry. Those are doorkeepers and gatekeepers who rather stand at the threshold of the house of God. Amen? And so various meanings of threshold, you know, it means the, build, the, the, the doorway. It also means the starting point for the new state, for a new experience or event to venture. Some of you are at a threshold going to start a new event, a new venture is yet to come. Come on, greater things ahead of you. Say amen. amen. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. And the young people, I'm still standing. Yeah. I preach on that on Friday that we are still standing. No matter what. Standing. That's right. Even though people put you down. Standing. Yeah. Even people step on you. Standing. People can step on you, put you down, but I'm still you are still, you are still, 
Come on, keep on standing because Jesus stands with you. Because the scripture is very clear. The Satan, you know, you put on your full armor of God and take your stand against the walls of the enemy. And after you have done everything, continue to stand. 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 Of course, not literally. I've got, I deal with many paralyzed patients. I used to joke with them, stand, come on, stand, brother. And they would laugh at me, you know. I love them so much. I was I was bedridden before, that's why I can joke about this. A threshold is a, I mean, Jesus walked into my room, that's why I'm standing right now. Hallelujah. A threshold is an amount, you know, a level, a point or limit. It's like you said, Chukok. I have enough. I have got this limit. I've come to this point. I've come to this level. And many of us in our lives will come to this point. Enough is enough. That's right. It's enough. You tell the enemy, enough is enough. Lay your hands off right now. I remember one time my son, my godson, was very, very sick with fever. For many, many days, it's not going away. And one day when I was driving, the Lord said, speak against it. And I said, enemy, enough. Satan, enough. Now, I'm not saying I go around rebuking the devil all the times when I visit my patients. You know, I walk the hospital for 30 over years. But in this specific case, I was very specific. And I said, I rebuke this fever right now. Satan, enough is enough. Lay your hands off my son right now. I drove home. He's completely healed. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Elisha Ki was his name. God is good, amen? Something, a threshold is an amount, a level, a point of limit on a scale when the threshold is reached, something would happen. Something would cease to happen. Whatever that's evil against you, attack against you, it's got to cease. Whatever that's going to bless you, it's got to happen. Something good is going to happen in your life. Hallelujah for the better. Because God worked all things out for good with those who love Him. And I call according to it. So it will cease, it will take effect and become true. Amen. This is the threshold we're talking about. You're facing the threshold. It's the time in your life that you find yourself standing on the threshold, pondering whether you have the courage and resilience. They say now the key word for success is resilience. Turn to your neighbor and say, do you have resilience? Resilience, Chinese call it, yan de mo ho, yan de zhoi yan na. Yan 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 na. That means you tahan until tak boleh tahan. Masih tahan, 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 tahan. Boleh tahan tak pagi ini? Boleh? Masih boleh tahan? Boleh berdiri? Berdiri kerana Yesus berdiri bersamamu. Amin. Hallelujah. Oh, we got to be standing, man. Against the walls of the animal, against the wicked scheme of the animal. Yeah, like the devil is like an animal. Huh? <laughs> oh, such crossing over signify transformations and breakthroughs. And it can be rather challenging. And the thing is this, often right at the threshold of your breakthrough, you come under attack. So often, it's so often, if you trace back your steps, you see that far too many times when you're right there, the enemy will come. I, 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 got, I got this picture this morning. Don't fear the enemy who attacks you, but the fake friend that hugs you. Mm. Remember Jesus? He was that fake friend that hugged him and gave him a kiss, the kiss of betrayer. So why are you afraid of the devil? Ask him to get lost. But it's the fake friends you don't know. So beware, all right? Okay, I'm not saying you have fake friends here. I, pre we, I believe these are all genuine friends. Like, uh, turn to your neighbor. Are you fake or are you real? Come on. Or maybe turn to your wife and ask, Oops, son, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You will encounter difficult circumstances and challenge. It is definitely part of puzzle of it. It's a package deal. All right, it comes in. Satan, Satan does not want you to take ground. The minute you take ground, like I say, he's going to come after you, give you difficult times. And so the threshold you're facing will be the biggest battle of your life. But you must not give up. Don't give up. You're at the brink of a miracle. Don't give up. You're at the brink of a miracle. But your father, far greater than the enemy, he has a plan for your life. What is Jeremiah 29, 11? Come on. God has a plan for my God has a plan for my life. A plan what not to hurt you or to harm you, but to give you a hope. Do you know in that scripture is already hinted? A plan not to hurt or harm you. That means sometimes circumstance can hurt or harm you. And so God assure you that plan is not to hurt or harm you, even though you might feel that like it's hurting you or harming you. But it's to give you a hope and a future. Oh, I like that. Jesus has a future for you and I. When you have a word future, that means you've got hope. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Crossing over the threshold. First of all, I'm taking from Joshua chapter 1. Moses died. That's the end. I told him yesterday, a pastor might die. <laughs> no, you didn't die. You're still alive. 
Can you imagine he's brought you to this position and then you die? Or maybe Pastor Kelvin Sim died. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I sent him your pictures yesterday and he texted me back. These are all my good friends, Pastor Kelvin Sim said. Ah, come on, come on, come on. It is when ministers can become friends. There's no more rank and file. We are friends. No more rank and file. That's what it should be. In fact, the daughter of uh, Sister Yap and Brother Yap, uh, you know, said to the mother, in those days, I used to see Pastor Julie from afar. Now we serve side by side. Oh, that's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, you don't have to see someone. So when I saw that little girl standing there, I went over to hug her. She doesn't have to see us from afar. Because you know why? We are all going to be standing before the same throne of God on the judgment day. Oh, I tell you, that's scary, man. Are you ready for judgment day? Ooh, my to see that. And so my servant is dead and it's, you know, Joshua could have said, I was the one who fought the Mal Amalekites. I was the one who spied the land. I was the one who came back with a good report. I was the only one with Caleb who survived where all the rest died. I should be able to lead you right now and move on. Moses is dead. It's me now. It's all about me. It's all about me. No, 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 no. It's all about... She had to strike. He could have. But scripture is very clear. He waited. He waited. We need to learn to wait. Because sometimes in the midst of overthinking, overdwelling, frustration and despair, we can make bash and harsh and wrong decisions that we're going to regret. Or we might say things. How many of you have said things that you've regretted before? You scolded your spouse. Oh, sorry. Let's not go there too. <laughs> Are you getting me? Wait. Turn to your neighbor and learn to wait. Can I have the key bodies this morning? We're going to walk through together. I always love to have the key bodies beside me. Thank you so much. Because we are a team. I'm a team person. I love to serve with your pastor and, and all your other pastors, you know. We are team players together. Oh, waiting on the Lord necessity two, necessitates two key things. A complete dependence on God and willingness to allow Him to decide. When you wait, God's going to speak to you. And you come to that point, says, you're going to renew my strength. You can't renew your own strength. He renews your strength. Oh Lord, Renew my strength that I will walk and not be weary. That I'll run and not faint. I wait upon you, Lord, speak to me. Wait. Another psalm you say, wait patiently upon the Lord. Wait. Because in His time, He makes all things beautiful. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says that all things bright. That is the time and season. And it's beginning to speak to you as you wait upon Him. And then you begin to depend on Him. Oh, you soar like an eagle. He will be the wind beneath your wings. He takes you to the high mountain tops, above the storm, above the stormy clouds. Wow! You say, Lord, I depend on you. Carry me through. Wait, hear from God. Then you make your move. So Joshua waited until he heard from God. My servant Moses is dead. Now, you and your people move to the land. You will encounter, hey, sorry, huh? the ballet. Secondly, you stand on the promises of God as you wait, as you hear from Him. You can move on because the promises of God has been spoken to you earlier. I'm sure many of you here has heard from God before. Say, God, when are the promises, when is the promises coming? When are the promises coming to pass? In His time. In His time. The scripture often has this word, and it came to pass. And do you know where God is concerned prophetically? Sometimes the coming to pass can take years. Hello? The promises of God in Peter, it says, they are yes and amen, it is true. But if you study the scripture prophetically, a lot of times when God speaks, it takes time. It might take years. Tell your neighbor, it might take years. Amen? But stand. Stand because He wants to give you. Every place your feet step upon, He wants to extend your territory. He says he want, you will be undefeatable. No one will be able to stand against you. And then His presence will be. What a promise for thing. He will give you. He wants to bless. He will extend your territory. He will make sure He protects you. Then no one can defeat you or stand against you. And fourthly, He said, My presence 
will go with you. And that's why in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, 20, at the end it says, Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of Father, Son, and Lord. And lo, I will be with you always until the end of the age. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you in Hebrews. Meaning he won't. And very often, I, when I lead someone to the other side of the world, in their last breath, I will say this to them. Jesus, the good shepherd, who laid down his life for you in this hour, I want you to know, brother or sister, I say to the patient, my cancer patients, I minister to cancer patients a lot. I've sent hundreds or thousands of them back home to Jesus. I have seen miracles. I've seen a number of resurrection. I'm honest with you, I'm not a healer. But oftentimes I say to them, He will not leave you or forsake you. He will come for you, go with Him. Right in front of my eyes, I see them take their last breath. And they go. Beautiful. I've seen coma patient rise up telling me about heaven. Do you know it's heaven and hell is as real as anything? My grandmother died, went to hell and rose again from the dead. Accepted Jesus. Lived for two more days and went to heaven. I fasted 30 days for her. See, God is no respecter of man. God is no respecter, but He hears your heart's cry. Amen? He will be with you until the end. Sorry, yeah. You got to be strong, be very courageous. Just because things are not happening yet, just because the battle get fiercest, do you know the battle is the fiercest before the enemy give up? You see, in war, 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 war show, the enemy, the opposition, they will fight until the end. Even the samurai show. Have you seen the last samurai? They died standing, you know. They didn't die down. They just stood there and at the end they would fight all the way. The Spartan 300. They fought against opposition. Give your best shot, whatever it takes. Be strong. Be courageous. And say, I'll come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty, like David, like that. You come against me with sword, spear, and javelin against Goliath, who is almost 10 feet tall. And this little boy, maybe about 16, 17, or 15 years old, small little boy. He said, But I come against you. Thousands of trained military men dare not even step out. But this little boy. I come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. He is with you. Be bold. Be strong. Be courageous. Don't quit. Don't retreat. Because you're on the winning side. Amen. Hallelujah. Three times in one short passage. Be strong, be courageous. Be strong and very courageous in verse 7. And then it says again, be strong and courageous. Do not be discouraged. God is with you. Be guarded and led by God's word. Be careful. It says be careful. Do you know we are not careful with the word of God? I shared with them yesterday when I was deli delivered from demon possession. I was possessed by 13 demons. All subsanely come like like taboo number 13. Maybe that's why... More cannot add it in. When every one of them came out, I knelt down before the presence of God for two weeks. I read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And since then, I've been reading the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. Stand on the word, be guarded, be careful. You don't turn from it to the left or right so that He will give you success. You want to be successful in your threshold? You want to be successful in your crossover? Hide the Word of God in you. Because the Word of God is life. It gives life. We want God, but we don't want His Word. We only have His Word when we come to church. Read God's Word. Turn to your neighbor and just read the Bible. Pray every day. Come on. 
Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray. Y'all don't go up in Sunday school. Ah? <laughs> Alama. If you want to grow, if you want to grow, if you want Read your Bible, pray every day. One to grow. And then he said, Forget your Bible. Forget to pray. Forget to pray. Forget to pray. Forget your Bible. Forget to pray. You will shrink, shrink, shrink. You will shrink, shrink, shrink. You will shrink, shrink, shrink. So you must. Read your Bible. You will grow. Come on. Thank God for His Word. There's power. This is the only book in the Bible through the centuries where men try to burn it, destroy it. It's the only book, the only holy book that has thrived through the century and survived until today. Powerful Word of God. Amen? So tell your neighbour, read the Word of God. Come on. Serious. I have one young Christian who got saved. He's a pharmacist. He got saved. He heard about my story. He already read. Last year, he got saved. He already read Genesis to Revelation. Come on. Thank God. He read. He said, Pastor, I finished. Then I got another young convert. Also last year got saved he read, She said, I read the whole New Testament I'm starting the Old Testament right now And I've got young people coming to me Pastor, I'm reading this book and that book And this book and that book I said, good, carry on to other books I told the church yesterday And I say today again The best discipleship book is the That's right If you can get all converts to read the Bible Your discipleship is done Tao Tim already Amen are there new converts in the church here? Like you were saved about five years ago. I'll take it as five years ago. You were saved about five years ago. Anyone here? Don't worry, I won't test you. Chris. So scared, no? They're not putting up their hand because they're so scared. They're so scared of this pastor. I'm quite a radical pastor, yeah? Don't worry, I won't ask you out. I won't ask for anything. Anybody? Okay, wonderful. I won't call you out. Don't worry. My encouragement to you is this. Read the Bible. Read the whole Bible. Even if you don't understand, you know why? The spirit man in us need to be fed. Even if you don't understand, never mind, especially those Leviticus book, you know. Never mind. Numbers book, Leviticus book, just read. Amen? Just read because your spirit man is saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, feed me, feed me. You see, okay, I give you McDonald's. My goodness, the people here line up for McDonald's like nobody's business. <laughs> I was shocked. I stay in a hotel. Every day we could look down. The queue never stopped for McDonald's. What's wrong with Johor Bahru people? Okay, never mind. <laughs> Ayo, achuan eh, McDonald's. I say, read the Bible lah. Okay, get your provisions. I like God. Do you know God is a very practical God? He told them, you got to get the provisions ready. He didn't say give up everything, just go by faith. You know, a lot of people do blind faith. You know what's blind faith? I want a job. I told him yesterday, I want a job. God will provide my job. But then you don't apply. Go and apply lah, do the right thing. Are you getting me? Some people say, I'm praying for a job. I said, good. How long have you been praying? Three months. So how? Waiting lah. Have you applied? No. You want to be headhunted hunted. Do the right thing. Do what's practical. Amen? And so, you know, like, I know people who just, by emotion, they give up everything to God. Then after that, no money, huh? To feed the family and all. Say, oh, yo, I've given everything to God. How come God never multiplied? They got it wrong. Because they take the principle, give and it shall be given unto you. Press now, shaken together and running out all over. Oh, so they give everything. If God speak, give. When God spoke to me at Tan Tak Singh Hospital to give up my everything, I was on salary as a pastor for three months. He says, Julie, today you live without salary. You just live by faith. And you will serve me without name, title or position. I obeyed him. And for so many years, 20 over years now, 
God is faithful. He has given me what the song says, so much I can give it away. Praise the Lord. Come on, give, his glory, give Him glory. I sponsored many pastors and students through university, not because I have, because He has. When He speaks to me, I say, God, I got no money. He said, God, he said to me, I have. There was one time I was in a youth, huge camp. God said, I want you to sponsor these four students because the parents died from Africa. I said, God, I'm not hearing you. <laughs> you know, he always catch me like that, you know. I said, God, four students, I got no money. And they're all university students, okay? Help, in, help university and all these university, four siblings. I said, God, I got no money. I will pretend to want to hear, you know. Then God said, Julie, I want you to sponsor these four siblings. God, I got no money. God said, I have money. And these four students are all graduated now. Come on, I'm working now. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. People ask me how, Pastor. Jokingly, yeah. I got money plant in my house. <laughs> so I plant my money plant, the one, the big leaf one, <laughs> not the small one. Then they all turn to US dollar, pound. <laughs> the Lord miraculously provide. I will have young people just come out to me, Pastor, I was impressed to give this check to you. My young adults, I'm sorry, it was belated. But you know, it came in and I paid for the fees. That's how it is. Tell your neighbour, we are just middlemen for God. Amen? Amen. So when God speaks, you obey. When I was in Singapore, pastor school, God said empty. You know you're in Singapore, you cannot empty your wallet. No, because after that, Malaysia cannot use and the money, cannot change. Bar. God said empty your wallet. Are you Lord, these are all my sing dollar. You know, three country time, I am beside la. God said empty. Are you so I empty, I want to keep $10, also cannot leh. After no MRT, ma, I gave all. And you know God, so good. A friend called me up. She was on business there. Said, come to the hotel and have a meal with me. Guess what? Provided law. Yeah. So turn to your name and says, you cannot outgive God. But be wise. You got to make provisions when you need to make provisions. Amen. Hallelujah. Be realistic. Ah. Let's be realistic. I'm realistic, okay? So I won't simply give you my bank account. Okay, let's go on. <laughs> Joshua 1, 2. I don't need money. I need His favour. When you have His favour, you've got it all. Amen? Get ready, cross it, and then get your provisions ready. And so they did. Hallelujah. Which side, yeah? Oh, sorry. Commitment, I love this scripture. Any leader and pastor would love this scripture. True or not? Let's read together, okay? Church, church, praise. Let's read together. Then they answered, Pastor Mike Okay, 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 okay. At this modern day context, it's not Joshua anymore, ma. Right. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do it together again. Everybody, church of praise. Then they answered, Pastor Mike, you, whatever you have commanded us, we will do. Amen. Wherever you send us, we will go. Amen. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, it's okay. So we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as He was with Moses. You look carefully in the context. These people are not. Then whoever rebels against your word and does not obey whatever. Uh, continue, continue. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey it, whatever you command them will be put. Oh, this one be strong, lah. Huh? Uh, not in our context, huh? Uh, only be strong and courageous. The beauty about this is this. Do you know this whole bunch of Israelites that came out from Moses, they were not obedient bunch? True or not? They were complainers. Are there complainers in the house? Say no. I want to hear no. Are there complainers in the house of God? No. They are murmurers. Huh? Are there murmurers in the house of God? Oh, I like it. I like to pastor this church also. Can we exchange space? Huh? The complainers, murmurers, disgruntled spirit people, are they here? No. Dissatisfied people, are they here? No. Why, I like lah, this church very good. And you know what? They, they were also stoners. They want to stone Moses also. Are there such people who want to throw rotten eggs at your pastor here? 
I love it, man. You throw the rotten eggs, I collect them, I fry them and ask you to eat. Uh. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is this, we are in the body of Christ, there's no perfect pastor. Neither are there perfect members. Nobody is perfect. I told my members before, Jesus, where I'm concerned, the whole world's books cannot contain my sin. Right also cannot finish. Where Jesus is concerned, the whole world's book cannot write all His good things. What an extreme. Yet we are saved by grace. Amen. And so these people are complaining lots. They're not obedient. And so all of them who came with Moses died. And sadly, Moses not allowed into the promised land just because of this group. He was so angry, he has every right to be angry. Do you know sometimes you have a right to be angry? True or not? But these people are so mad. So he only did one wrong thing. That's all he did. He's supposed to speak to the rock. He was so angry. He didn't want to speak to the rock. He's supposed, you know, he, he has a rod, ma. Supposed to speak to the rock. Instead of speaking to the rock, he. Sorry, huh? You won't break one, don't worry. Although I was a martial arts champion before. I play with the Shaolin stick. So don't fight me. <laughs> That's called history. I'm serious. There was one lady who was snatched teeth on the two motorbike, dragged him on the bike. Everybody, a lot of men saw, nobody came. I threw my handbag, threw my kaki, threw everything. I ran after the motorbike and I was giving my flying kick to them. They let go. And I saved the lady. Come on, praise the name of the Lord. Because I said I've got nothing to lose. But I said this lady cannot be paralyzed. I minister to paralyzed people. I cannot afford to see her paralyzed. The most they will do is beat me up, that's all. And I was prepared to do that. We must be bold and strong and courageous in a world that's so full of wickedness. And so Moses was prevented from entering the promised land just because. You know why God deals so strongly? You must understand, we ministers are dealt very strongly by God. I'm serious one. One time I delay my tithes. Huh? Ah, you God convict me until I go down on the floor. God, okay, okay, I'll faster pay my tithes. Delay only. Uh. People uh, never pay a few months or so. Can. I delay only. Leh. See you now. I quit. Lah. <laughs> no, lah. But that's how the Lord deal with us. We must have full commitment and obedience not to the leadership, to Him who is the head of the church. In obeying God, you obey the leadership. In serving God, you serve the people. That's how you go the extra mile. Amen. And so this group that came, they were the ones who survived the wilderness. The others died. They're the next generation. Amen. Consecration to the Lord. Finally, I'm closing soon. He said, consecrate yourself. Set yourself aside. God wants to do something, a miracle, a breakthrough, a great thing, a new venture. For some of you, your business is stuck somewhere. You don't know what else. A new strategy, a new plan, a new insight, an open door. Maybe some of you are at the threshold of decision and indecision. You don't know what's next. God will put a next step for you. But consecrate yourself. It means separation of yourself from everything else and say, God, here am I on the altar of sacrifice. Do something new in my heart. Break me, mold me. You're the porter, I'm the clay. Prepare me for the great things you have in store for me. Amen. And with that, finally, move from your position and follow by faith. When they see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, the Leviticus priests were carrying, you are to move out from your position and follow. Take that step of faith. If any man have this mustard seed faith and speak to that mountain, be moved from here to there, it shall be done. God is not looking for big faith, large faith, strong faith. You know, we always pray, God, give me big faith, strong. No, 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 no. no. Just a mustard seed faith. Mustard seed faith. 
You know the leper that came to Jesus, he said, Lord, if you are willing. Was that great faith? He came with an if. Sometimes we don't know how to pray. I tell you this, forget about all the terminology. I pray for the sick for 30 over years. I've seen tumour being healed. I've seen last, last stage cancer being healed. I've seen death, a few resurrection. I've seen many die, I'm honest with you. I used to be confused with all the terminology of saying the right word, saying the right things. It's not the right words and right things, it's the right heart. David was not a perfect man, but he was a man after God's heart. Acts affirm it. You know why? He says because he's a man after God's heart because he will do everything God tells him to do. If God tells you to go to the hospital, you don't know how to pray, you lay hands on the sick. Lord, let it be your will. If you want to take him home, take him home. I prepare my patients honestly. You know, sometimes we keep giving them, God's going to heal you, God's going to heal and they die. The family get disappointed. The faith get destroyed. I prepare my patients when I sense it's time to go. I say, I want you to know, I will pray with all my heart for your healing. But there are times I say the truth. God takes you home. But you must know that when you go home, that is celebration. There'll be no more pain, no more sorrow. And with that, I prepare the family. That when he should go, they know that he has gone to a better place. If he should leave, we leave him to the hands of God for that miracle. Are you getting me? So stop being confused. Forget about all the terms. Even if you pray wrongly, it's okay. God knows your heart is right. Right? Like your children come to you. Simple analogy. The little child comes to you. Actually, the child wants something. That deal, no, no, no. Okay, like I give you. Lah. You know what the child actually wants. So that's how God is. He's a loving God. He's a wonderful God. We don't know how and nor do we have all the answers. But let's sing as we close here. God is so good. And the beauty is this. The cross. The cross. You will cross your threshold. As soon as the priest who carried the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. The priest who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan, stood on dry ground, while all Israel passed by until the whole nations had completed the crossing on dry ground. The threshold of breakthrough is coming. Amen? The threshold of breakthrough is coming. Amen? Of victory is coming because God is so good. Amen.